Today on BRS TV Investigates, with the latest G5 Radeon XR30s being released, where does that leave the rest of you who already own the Radeon Gen 4 XR30 Pros? Trust me, you're not forgotten because today we pull a few of our own Radeon G4 Pros off of our testing shelves and give them the full works so that you can have the data you need to dial in the Radeon XR30 Pros you already own. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates where we experiment on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And today we're going to see the most comprehensive test of the Radeon Gen 4 XR30 Pro to date with detailed and specific recommendations for optimal mounting height, spacing of multiple XR30s, and at the end, we give you our BRS recommended settings for spectrum and intensity we would use for LPS tanks like this and SPS dominated dream tanks like these. Our battery of tests begins by answering one of the most commonly asked questions we all want to know right up front and that is how many Gen 4 Radeon XR30s do you need to achieve those LPS and SPS tank goals? In a world of unlimited space, time and budget we certainly would test every single tank size out there but since that's not a reality, we've picked this 60 gallon, two foot by two foot cube and this 120 gallon, four foot by two foot tank to base all of our tests and recommendations on since a majority of you will likely fall somewhere near or close to tanks that size. With that, for these LPS, zoanthids, and pally heavy tanks that typically require low to medium par to thrive in, we recommend using a single Gen 4 XR30 Pro over a 60 gallon tank like this, or two XR30 Pros for this 120 gallon tank, which is essentially two 60 cubes pushed together. Now, if you're like me, and you dream of filling your two foot cube or four foot tank with every last Acropora or SPS stick you can get your hands on, and you need a light capable of pushing out that higher kind of par to get you there, our data we're about to share is going to show you how a single Gen 4 XR30 Pro will do the trick in that 60 gallon cube where the HEI lens combined with the reflections off the glass do an excellent job at illuminating a cube like this. However, in that 4 foot 120 gallon tank, we recommend three XR30s to provide that hard to shadow even blanket of light that SPS corals thrive in and it all starts by mounting them at the optimal mounting height above the water. We approach testing for optimal mounting height from two angles, reduce any center hotspot as best we can, and evenly distribute as much of the light into the outer edges without losing more than 15% to spillage out of the tank. We do this by setting all available color channels to max, mounting the light six inches off the water surface to start, then we raise the light inch by inch while we shoot a grid of 36 par measurements six inches deep in the tank until we find that optimal mounting height. Seeing what this looks like using the Radeon Gen 4 XR30 Pro, at 6 inches off the water there's no doubt we can improve the center hotspot at 1276 par and increase the outer ring up from 217. With the 498 overall average par at this height we continue to raise the light up where when we check in at 2 inches higher at 8 inches we see that the center hotspot has dropped by 351 par down to 925 and we've gained almost 100 par in the outer edges to 312. Although those gains are fairly significant, we've only lost 2% total average par at 2 inches higher, so we definitely have room to see better performance. Again, we raised the light 1 inch at a time, and now when we reach 10 inches, we tested a 700 par center, which is a 576 par difference from 6 inches, where we're now seeing 141 more par in the outer edges, up to 358. Yet the goal here is to improve both the center and outer ring as much as we can without losing more than 15% of the light out into the surrounding room. And at 10 inches, there's only an 8% difference, so we continue to test. We finally stopped the test when we got to 12 inches off the top of the water where we began to dance really close to that 15% light efficiency loss, which at this mounting height was 14% of the 6 inch height. Yet at 12 inches, we now see much better performance in spread and distribution, where the center hotspot is now down to 561 par, and the outer ring comes in at 367. Because our threshold for light spill is right on the edge with the light mounted at 12 inches, we have found our BRS recommended mounting height for the XR30 Pro Gen 4. So to some, that 12 inch mounting height may come as a surprise, but for those paying attention to the way that the pros have used Gen 4s over the years, over their grow out and coral farm tanks, mounting these lights that high demonstrates how optimal performance is achieved when using them. With the recent release of the Gen 5 Radeon Pro and the performance that we tested with it, where we found their sweet spot mounting height to be at eight inches off the water, 
it'll be interesting to see what the aquaculture facilities are able to achieve with nearly a hundred par increase at every testing point and almost a hundred more total average par with them mounted four inches lower than the Gen 4 XR30s. Now that we've confirmed that the Radeon Gen 4 Pro is best served with a higher mounting height, we take that information and we use it to conduct our next test, which is figuring out how to properly space multiple Radeons over a four foot 120 gallon test tank for both LPS and SPS dominated systems. In this test, we look at how the light source from two and three XR30s intersect with each other in the tank and how we can optimize that by spacing the lights further apart from each other until the intersection hotspot is reduced and the outer edges come within 75% or more of the average center part. We do this by first mounting two Gen 4 Radeons, which is our recommended number of modules for that LPS Softy and Polyp dominated system at 12 inches off the water and spacing them centered at equal divisions of a 48 inch tank or each light module centered at 16 inches. For light spacing, we test PAR using a grid of 66 data points in the middle of the tank from top to bottom, where the light intersection points will be more prominent. To get an idea of what this looks like, we see that at our 16 inch spacing, the light predominantly intersects in the center of the tank, showing a 608 average PAR, while the outer edges come within only 51% of the center, testing at just 311. Yet when we move the lights further apart from each other, each to 15 inches on center from the left and right edges, we are able to reduce that center average par to 572 and increase the edges to 332, which is still under our goal at a large gap of 58%. We continue to space the lights closer to the extreme edges of the tank, this time centered on 14 inches each from the left and right side. And now we test the outer edges at 67% of the 533 par center, still not quite to our goal yet, so we separate the lights again, each by one inch, and test again. Now with the light spaced at 13 inches on center, we hit our goal of distributing the light intersection to within 77% of the average par outer edges at 374, compared to the reduced center hotspot of 486 par, giving us our optimal BRS recommended spacing for two Radeon Gen 4 XR30 Pros. Let's follow the same testing procedure for spacing, again using our recommendation of three XR30 Pros for SPS dominated four foot tanks, where like the last test, we set all channels to 100%, this time mount them perpendicular to the tank and above the water at 12 inches, and begin testing with 48 inch tank evenly divided with the lights mounted on center at 12 by 24 by 12 inches. Utilizing that same 75% goal in the outer edges compared to the hotspot center, we find that this light spacing winds up also being too close together, creating a 796 average par in the middle, and yet just 477 average par in the outer edges, making them within 60% of each other and short of our goal. In order to improve the light distribution using three lights, we keep the middle module fixed at 24 inches on center and move the outer two modules further apart towards the edges of the tank, where we now have them spaced at 11 by 24 by 11 inches on center. Doing this has now increased the average par on the outer edges to within 66% of the center, which is now at 755. We space the outer lights further apart one more time to 10 by 24 by 10 inches, and it's here that we've improved the spread in such a way that we hit our 75% goal dead on, testing the outer edges at 520 and the center par average at 690, making this spacing of 10 by 24 by 10 our BRS recommended sweet spot spacing for three Gen 4 XR30 Pro Radeons. So Spectrum offering is next, and this one is pretty straightforward as many of you are familiar with and use the popular AB Plus Spectrum template. So for our next component of today's testing and data for the Gen 4 XR30 Pro, we will utilize the AB Plus template from EcoSmart Live and adjust the overall intensity of that Spectrum mix to provide you with the PAR data and settings that you can translate over to your own tank and setup. Before we dive into some very specific recommendations for intensity settings using the data we just gathered for mounting height and space and using the AB Plus Spectrum template. And before we all run to our tanks and start making significant changes to our current light setup, I think it's important to keep in mind that the best thing we can provide for our tanks, especially for those tanks that have adapted to the light settings you already have been running, is that we plan on making changes, we do it slowly and deliberately to avoid disrupting the tank's stability. This is one area where you may want to develop a plan, test your tank's PAR levels where your lights are now, and implement any changes over several weeks to months. 
Okay, so with that, we're going to take what we've learned today and apply it to our 60 and 120 gallon testing tanks with our two tank type goals in mind to use the Radeon Gen 4 XR30 Pros to create show-stopping LPS and softy tanks like these reefers have been able to accomplish, then in the same two tank sizes, achieve an SPS-dominated wall-to-wall -wall stick tanks like these examples. Let's start with those who dream of a tank filled with LPS first in a tank size similar to our two foot by two foot cube tank, where we have a single XR30 Pro mounted at 12 inches off the water and our AB Plus Spectrum template set to an overall intensity of 30%. For this type of tank, we are trying to fill as much of the tank as possible with 75 to 150 par from the top to bottom. And out of a total of 108 testing points within three depths of the tank, using these settings, we were able to hit 98 of those points in that 75 to 150 range for a total of 91% of the tank optimized for these coral types. Moving over to our 120 gallon four foot tank where we double the tank size and double the radions to accomplish that same LPS tank goal. Again, we're mounting the XR30s at 12 inches off the water and spaced at 13 inches on center from the edges of the tank. Here, we kept the 30% overall intensity setting using the AB Plus template and tested 198 data points where we saw 168 of those points hit that 75 to 150 range, filling 85% of this tank from top to bottom in optimal par. So obviously the Gen 4 Radions are more than capable of supporting corals in that lower par demand range, but for the next portion of this test, we up our game to reaching par ranges from 200 to 350 throughout as much of those same 60 and 120 gallon sized tanks in order to grow out a tank that will one day become overgrown with healthy branching Acropora and other SPS corals. Given that we already know our optimal mounting height, spacings, and spectrum template, Creating these recommendations is so easy, all we need to do is increase the overall intensity from our LPS recommendations to hit those higher par goals. That means for the 60 gallon cube with a single radion mounted at 12 inches, we set the AB plus template to 85% intensity and find that out of 108 test points from the top, middle, and bottom of the tank, 77% of them, or 83 out of 108, fall into that 200 to 350 par, meaning that these settings should be able to create that SPS tank of our dreams in this two foot cubed area. Next up is our 120 gallon system using the same mounting height and spectrum settings as we have for each tank goal this far. The only thing we're changing here is spacing three lights perpendicular to the tank like this and turning our AB plus spectrum template overall intensity to 55%. With optimally spaced and mounted radions in this configuration, we hit 154 out of 198, or 78% of points, again, in that par sweet spot pocket of 200 to 350. I mentioned earlier that we also tested the latest G5 Radeon XR30 Pro with very different results, some would say dramatic improvements to mounting height, but just how true is that statement? Did ditching the dual puck design of the Gen 4 and revamping the optics and LED array design actually result in measurable improvements to spread, distribution, or even overall par? Find out yourself in this testing video right over here.